Well, welcome back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Well, I told you this diagnostic service manual flowchart was going to be a complex test, long and tedious of sorts, and it is. That's why we pulled out the big guns, Chief Tech Chase, to help us understand a proper, accurate system test. Chase, what do we got going on here? All right, not only is it complex, you got to have a high dollar <laughs> scan tool to do this test, <laughs> and not everybody has that. And what I did here, Brian, is I went in and hooked up our scan tool, and what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to communicate with that actuator. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick this meter and use it as an actuator, basically. Okay. If you'll go ahead and hook us up to that pin right there, I'll sure. run a test. Okay. And now what this test is going to do is just tell me if, if my wiring is good or not, am I communicating? That's okay. all it's going to tell me to do. So to get this part of the test right, we had to hit the A post here. The diagram online told us that. We put a needle down in this A post and we're good. And I'm connected, so let's see what we got. All right, we should have, we got some voltage there. And what I'm going to do when I actuate this, that voltage should go away. And that tells me we're communicating. Perfect. All right, we'll go ahead and continue here and run the test. Great. And there you see it. As you can tell, now that tells us the whole system is good. We, we might want to start looking at the component. Okay, really important to understand. So you can do this fancy test at home for sure, but for us car guys who need a better way and don't have all the fancy tools, John's going to show us exactly how we do this in the driveway and still get the accuracy. Yeah, and you don't have to be a ninja with the scan tool like Chief Tech Chase here. All right, thank you. Hey, listen up. This is a component test. Now, you can use a component test on any one of these circuits, which is really cool because we're just testing the component. You can do this right on the driveway. And injectors, coils, any kind of solenoids, they have an ohmic value. So if I slip, slip this over to ohms of resistance and I give you the lead here and we switch them over, Brian, what you're going to do is you're going to go across that actual component, terminals A and B down at the component itself. Yep. And what we're trying to see is an ohmic value and this thing actually says anywhere from 9.5 to 15 on the graphic so we know what it is and ours is showing OL. That's infinity. That's it's out of limits. Out of that's limits. gone. So yeah. that's a good thing because if it wasn't that, we'd be digging down in that cam solenoid and down to the actual actuator. We don't want to do that. So what we can do here is go ahead and pull that out and I'll show you the test that we actually ran. It's called ohmic values or testing actually for resistance. Now I have one here and I actually blew it apart for us. This is cool because this is what Brian's taken out. We took it over to the big old chop saw and we took it apart. So what's happening inside of any solenoid is the actual voltage voltage is coming in, it's going around here and it's creating a magnetic field which is either pulling or pushing that solenoid open and closed which is actually injecting that oil into that cam phaser and that's what's making it happen there. So you can see if any one of these are broken, the wires are broken, when we go across that with that ohmic value was OL or out of limits. Well the meter sends out a little signal and it didn't see anything come back so infinity and beyond, it's gone. So it actually read OL. Now you can have these wires actually shorted to each other. If they're touching each other it's going to bypass all this resistance, you're going to get this super high number on there, which is bad. It's not falling within that specifications. Now I got a couple different sensors you can look at. We have an actual injector here. Now my injector is a fuel injector. Same thing. It's got a wire windings in there. It's going to have an ohmic value. So if I switch my meter over here to ohms, you can see here on ohms and I go across the actual solenoid itself. You can see this injector showing 16.3. Well, in the factory service manual, you'll have a spec, or you can look it up, and you'll see if it's good or bad right there, but it's not OL, so we know we're in better shape. Now, also, you have wheel speed sensors. Same thing. There's a wire winding. It's picking up a signal, a magnetically induced signal from a wheel speed sensor. So if I go across this guy here, this wheel speed sensor, Man, that thing's got about 300 and something there. That's a good one, 341. I don't know what the spec is, but we would look it up and we can tell if that was good or bad. Coils, once again, the same thing. Coils have big winding of wires in there. Primary side inducing it to the secondary side. Has to have an ohmic value or ohms of resistance. Now here's the new solenoid we're gonna replace it with. Now you remember that flow chart? It said 9.5 and a little bit higher to that. I think it went all the way up to, let me take a look at it again. 9.5 to 15 ohms of resistance. It has to fall within that window. Well, I got the new solenoid. I'm going to put one on each terminal here. And I have 10.5. Man, that's right down the middle of the road. This solenoid's in good shape. Brian, I got your rockauto.com solenoid ready to go. How are you doing? Awesome. I have this old one just about out. Now, here's a really good tip. This is important. You're working on the top of any engine, overhead camshaft. You don't want any chance of something falling down in there. So I like to use a magnet here to get our one 10 millimeter bolt up out. There it is. We're going to put it up here out of harm's way. I'm going to go ahead and work this solenoid up out. It comes right out. There you go, John. I'll hand you that. And again, really important to clean this deck, clean this area right here so nothing falls down into the valve train or on those cam lobes. 
There we go. Okay, we're ready for your new one, buddy. Yep, and you can match them up. Make sure they're going to be right. About the right depth there, it's pretty cool. And what I really like about this solenoid, check it out, it even comes with the bolt. So if oh, you didn't drop it into perfect. the engine, it just fell down the engine compartment, and you're still good to go. All right, I'm going to get it torqued. We'll get it reconnected, and I think we're ready for a road test. Yep, and check this out right here. These are the little screens right here. That's what Brian was talking about, the oil flow. This has to be clean. Everything has to go in there. Now it's just a matter of getting that torque down to specifications, reconnecting everything, double check your work, and obviously clear the codes, take it on a test drive, let it run that enable criteria we talked about a little bit earlier. Bam, it'll run that test. You'll have variable valve time and this thing will be running great, top notch. But I'll tell you what, there's plenty more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Stick around. We'll be right back.